eight trombonists you must hear. Now I get a lot of people coming to me, whether they're trombonists or non-trombonists who are improvisers and interested in jazz, and they say, what are some trombonists that are alive today that I can listen to to get some ideas for my improvisation or just, you know, to listen to? So I thought I'd make this video of eight trombonists that are alive today that you can check out. Number one, let me pull up my list here. Okay. Number one is John Allred. Now, John Allred is one of my personal favorite trombone players. His sound is just world class. His technique, same. His improvisation is has modern elements to it. It has bebop elements, and he can play Dixieland. He can play basically whatever you throw at him. He's one of those players that when people first listen to him, they say, oh, that must be a valve trombone player, or maybe that's a trumpet player. No, it's a trombone player. And he um, was obviously influenced a lot by Carl Fontana, by Frank Rosalino. And... Um, I think he plays a lot in New York right now and a lot of Broadway shows. He also probably plays, I think he plays bass, trombone, and tuba a lot. His dad's also a trombone player, Bill Allred. And an album I'd recommend starting with, with John, is an album that came out in the early 90s called In the Beginning. He plays a lot of standards and some of his own original compositions. And he's got a lot of great cadenzas on there. He plays euphonium, I think, on one track. And he has a guest artist on there as well. And um, the only problem is he's playing with a lot of musicians that aren't very well known. He isn't very well known himself, unfortunately. But uh, I also have a YouTube video that a lot of people have really liked. I think at this point it's got about 13,000 views. I'd recommend you check that one out. It's on my channel, and it's John playing with a big band over the changes of There Will Never Be Another You and Intermission Riff. And it's one of the, I think, one of the best trombone, jazz trombone videos on YouTube showcasing what a human being can do on, on trombone. Number two, Elliot Mason. Elliot Mason is a younger guy that is based in New York right now. I think he's from the UK. His brother plays trumpet, and together they released an album called The Mason Brothers Quintet, I think back in like 2010, 2011. Highly recommend that album. It has Dave Kikoski on it. It's got Scott Colley. It's got Joe Locke and it, Antonio Sanchez on drums, and this guy Tim Miller on guitar. Amazing album. I think. Oh, it features Chris, features Chris Potter as well on a Giant Steps Contrafact. And um, so he, uh, Elliot's been playing with uh, Jazz at Lincoln Center since like 2007, I think, with Wynton Marsalis. And he still plays with them, tours, tours with them. And I think he's coming out with a solo album I have on pre-order this winter. So there's a lot of recordings of Elliot Mason on YouTube as well, playing bass trumpet or playing trombone. Uh, so check him out. It's more of a modern style, but you can tell he's been influenced a lot by Carl Fontana and Frank Rosalino as well. Number three trombonist you should definitely check out is Michael Dees. Michael Dees currently teaches, I think, at MSU, Michigan State University. Um, he's a very traditional, straight-ahead, bebop-type player, uh, which I personally just love and uh He's another guy that he sounds like a trumpet player playing trombone. I think a funny story, he originally started on saxophone, and he played saxophone, I think, until college or high school around that area. And then he heard Curtis Fuller on the album Blue Train with John Coltrane, and he switched to trombone. So he, he switched to trombone rather late, later than in his life than usual. And... Um, He's only like 35 now, but he's just a virtuoso, and again, he sounds like a, a trumpet player or a valve trombone player playing trombone. His technical facility is amazing. He's got a big band album out. He's got a lot of solo albums, um, and I think he just plays a lot in the scene. And Check him out on YouTube. There's a lot of good videos of him on YouTube as well. Number four, 
Conrad Herwig is probably one of the better known trombone players alive today. He's played with just about everyone, Joe Henderson. Um, he's got just a bajillion solo albums out, uh, albums as a leader or as a sideman. And um, he's, there's a, some really good bootlegs I have from him back in like the 2000s playing at Jamie Ebersault's jazz camp where he's playing a really up-tempo version of Firm Roots and The Night Has a Thousand Eyes. So I'm going to put those up on my YouTube channel probably soon. But yeah, Conrad Herwig, one of the best trombone players alive today. Teaches at Rutgers, I think, currently. I bet I didn't already say that. I think we're on number five. Andy Martin is a guy that has been influenced a lot, it seems, by Carl Fontana. I think he did a recording, actually, with Carl Fontana back in the day. And he currently plays a lot with Gordon Goodwin and the Gordon Goodwin Big Band. And he's a West Coast guy, plays a lot. I think he played with Dancing with the Stars when Dancing with the Stars used to have a, a live big band that they played with. And uh, I actually got to meet Andy Martin. He came to the Kenosha Jazz Fest a couple years back, and he played along with a lot of our middle school, high school bands as a clinician. And uh, is a phenomenally great guy and one of the best human beings you'll ever meet. Humble. And, uh, yeah, all-around great player. Number six, Mark Nightingale is a guy you should check out that is actually from Britain. I think he's an English guy. And he was another one of those people that was a prodigy, I think, when he was young. He was just a very talented. He is a very talented musician. Uh, an album I I'd highly recommend that you check out of his is an album he did with a German big band called the R-I-A-S Big Band. I don't know what that stands for, it's some kind of acronym. And the album is called Destiny, and he plays just a bunch of standards on there with the big band, but they're really cool arrangements of like, what is this thing called love, the song is you, um, and some other really good ones. So I think he toured as well with James Morrison through Europe in the 90s. Um, yeah. Number seven on our list is Wycliffe Gordon. Wycliffe Gordon is a guy whose trombone sound, I like to say, closest is the closest thing to the human voice. You know, he's one of those guys when you go to a concert that even your mom, who just likes country music, will appreciate his his playing. She can connect with 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 his playing, and. Um, he, I think, he used to teach at Juilliard in the Manhattan School of Music, and um, he also plays didgeridoo. I think he plays trumpet and tuba, and he's got one of the best techniques with the plunger that I've ever heard on trombone. And his dad was like a church organist, so Wycliffe grew up in the church playing with a lot of gospel music and uh, just a very, very expressive player and got a ton of albums as a leader and a sideman out as well. And number eight, last but certainly not least, Steve Davis is one of the guys I admire the most on trombone because of his, again, his straight ahead style, his root in the bebop tradition, and um, very influenced it by J.J. Johnson and Curtis Fuller. He currently, I think, lives in New York, and he plays with this group called One for All, which is with Eric Alexander and David Hazeltine. Great group that's got a lot of cool albums. Steve Davis has a ton of albums out as a both a leader and a sideman as well, and his tone is one of the warmest tones you'll ever hear. Uh, you know, he teaches at Jamie Abersall Jazz Camp in Louisville uh, during the, the summer, so... If you ever have the opportunity to do that, I highly recommend you you do that. Okay, that was my list of eight trombone players that you absolutely should hear. Hope you liked the video. Uh, comment, subscribe. There will be a lot more content coming out. Thanks for watching.